Thank you. Good morning. Do you remember what it's like to give birth? Those of you who are mothers or fathers in the audience, do you remember the euphoria that fills your heart and mind? The labor is over, the pain has stopped, and you can rest and just study every detail of this new little being. You fall in love instantly, and you become fiercely protective of this new little life. So imagine your shock if your nurse brought a doctor into the room and they looked at your baby and said something about his color being a bit off and then whisked your perfect child off to the nursery. Within two hours, you're told that your baby has a serious form of congenital heart disease. And then you're asked to choose between three options. Number one, a heart transplant. Number two, a series of three operations spread over two years. Or you could choose to do nothing and take your baby home to die. The next morning, your baby is flown 1,800 miles away to the nearest pediatric surgery site. This is what happened to baby Jacques. And Jacques is lucky he survived. Not all babies do. Baby Christian's mom didn't have the opportunity to choose between the heart transplant, the series of three operations, or doing nothing. She had a prenatal ultrasound when she was pregnant with him, but she, we didn't realize that there was something wrong with her baby's heart. It wasn't diagnosed after he was born either. There were some symptoms. His oxygen levels were a bit low, but not consistently and not enough to trigger further investigation, so they sent baby Christian home. After four fretful days and nights of trying to get her baby to breastfeed, Christian's mom brought him back to the emergency department. The nurse took one look at her child and realized that he was very sick. She rushed them into the resuscitation room. His mom didn't know this, but Christian was dying. His kidneys had already failed and his brain was suffering from a lack of oxygen. She just thought he wasn't feeding well. The hospital staff pulled out all the stops and tried desperately to save this baby, but it was too late, he died. I have some experience with this. The day our 21-year-old son Paul died, the medical system worked like a well-oiled machine. He was in for a routine CT scan, and it detected a life-threatening bowel problem. So we were in the right place at the right time with the right specialists available. In fact, everything that could have gone wrong didn't, and still he died. In the five years since, like most parents who've lost a child, I've replayed the series of events of Paul's last day in my mind over and over, and I always come to the same conclusion. I have no one to blame, no niggling doubts about what would have happened if we had done something different, if he would have survived. I'm not burdened with any if-onlys. Both of these stories are true. Baby Christian died, and sadly, he's not alone. Every year in Manitoba, 30 babies are born with a critical form of congenital heart disease. It is the most common of all congenital diseases and the most deadly. Heart disease is responsible for 35% of infant deaths and 50% of childhood deaths from congenital disease, but they don't have to die. If we could figure out that there's something wrong with their heart beforehand, we could make arrangements to have them born in the right hospital with the right doctors and the right equipment at hand. This is where diagnostic ultrasound can play a key role. When baby, when Colin's mom was pregnant, she had a prenatal ultrasound and his heart abnormality was diagnosed. That gave the parents and the medical team four months to decide how to proceed. They made a plan they could prepare for his birth. It gave his parents four months to choose between those three options. And Colin's mom told me that it helped adjust their expectations because now they knew that they weren't having the Gerber baby. 
She said it meant that when he was born, they could just concentrate on what needed to be done. Their hearts and minds were prepared. All three of these stories are true. And all three of these babies had the very same form of heart disease. The difference is when we found out about the heart disease and therefore the amount of time the medical team and community had to respond to it. I've been a sonographer for 11 years. A couple years into my new profession, I felt uncomfortable. I wasn't sure I would be able to recognize an abnormal heart in a fetus and when I asked around many of my colleagues felt the same way and our discomfort was well founded because our detection rate was disturbingly low and the stakes were high. Every year in Manitoba between four and six babies were dying because their heart disease wasn't diagnosed early enough to prevent irreversible damage or serious complications. Were we missing something here in Manitoba that everybody else was seeing? The answer was unequivocally no. I have read over 80 articles written by doctors from all over the world on this topic. And this is a universal problem. We're struggling with this all over the world and it's a problem that we really want to resolve because at the same time that we were getting better at picking up heart problems and trying to diagnose them earlier, the pediatric cardiac surgeons were devising new ways to fix these abnormal hearts. They were able, able to offer hope where there, none existed in the past. Something needed to be done, and I knew I couldn't do it alone. So we pulled together a team, and we started working on this problem. We did three things that none of the other articles or projects did. The first thing is we created um, a simple, focused heart screen protocol. And we used this to teach, and we taught this to all the sonographers across Manitoba. Other studies would create a, a small group of super sonographers and highly train them, but we made a deliberate decision to teach this to all the sonographers all across Manitoba. The second thing that we did that nobody else did is we provided a feedback route to the um, sonographers so that they would be able to track their progress. Thirdly, our project was relatively cost neutral where others um, pursued newer, the newest technology. We found that our back to basic approach was actually more successful and it was sustainable because the simplicity of our approach made, it, um, made the implement, implementation of this relatively easy. It just became part of the routine prenatal ultrasound that was already be, being performed on well over 95% of women in Manitoba. This took eight years, but all of our hard work and collaboration paid off. The project only worked because every sonographer in Manitoba and the nurse sonographers in the fetal assessment department took the time and effort to learn this new protocol. And they put it into practice on every single obstetric ultrasound they performed every single day. Our hard work paid off. Do you remember I told you that in um, Manitoba 30 babies were born with a serious form of heart disease? Well, since our project began, in the first year after, after we devised this new protocol, we picked up 21 heart abnormalities. A couple of years ago, we picked up 27. Our project worked because we weren't just changing the, the, work, the process at one hospital, we changed it all over the entire province. Do you remember I told you that before in Manitoba, four, between four and six babies were dying because their heart disease couldn't be di wasn't diagnosed early enough to prevent these irreversible damage? Well, in the six years since we started this new protocol, not a single baby has died because a heart, uh, these, a heart abnormality diagnosis came too late. 
Let me tell you one more story. When baby Sanders' mom had a, an ultrasound when she was pregnant, his heart abnormality, the sonographer recognized that there was something a little wrong with his heart. As the pregnancy progressed, it became clear that his only hope for survival would be a heart transplant. So for only the second time in Western Canada, a fetus was put on the heart transplant list. A fetus. He wasn't even born yet. The next day, he was at the top of the North American transplant list. And wouldn't you know, a heart became available. Two days later, the call came. There was a heart from a baby in California. The coordination for this was nothing short of miraculous. Baby Xander would survive less than two hours out of his mother's womb, and the donor heart had to be used within five hours in order to remain viable. So they delivered Xander by cesarean section three weeks early so that he could receive this heart. And he became the youngest Canadian ever to receive a heart transplant. Here he is. <laughs> Here he is helping mom clean up from his first birthday cake. And now he's a happy, healthy five-year-old in kindergarten. This is what we did in Manitoba. But really, it could be done anywhere. My dream is that babies across Canada and around the world could benefit from the hard work and simplified approach that we, that we came up with here in Manitoba. Thank you for your attention.